I'm John Skinner and this supports chapter 4 of my book Fishing the Bucktail and the book covers bucktailing for a variety of species from surf, kayak, and boat. We're bucktailing calm, relatively shallow surf in this video. Uh, we'll be using the bottom bucktail, which is a three-quarter ounce homemade, and a strip of number 50 Uncle Josh pork rind. Here's a look at the retrieve speed, and you'll notice that it varies somewhat because even though it's pretty calm, I still have some waves pushing it at me sometimes. So um, at that point, you'll see me speed up, and then I'll slow down again. And basically, I'm you know maintaining contact with the bucktail, and I'm trying to do a slow to moderate retrieve, swim it you know just a little bit up off the bottom. This is a Long Island uh, South Shore Ocean Beach. Um, the predominant bait fish right now is sand eels and even though in this situation a lot of people will throw sand eel imitators such as diamond jigs, tsunami sand eels, needlefish and so forth, uh, bucktails still work very well when sand eels are the predominant bait. The water is not very deep here and uh, I'm guessing I'm throwing into about six feet of water and as you can see it's very calm so uh, you know, these can be challenging conditions to get fish to hit. Uh, in terms of choice of bucktail, with it being relatively shallow and, and calm, I'm going with a three-quarter ounce bucktail, and it's actually one of my homemades, which I put hackle feathers uh, on the hook shank, and that bulks it out a little bit, so it's even a little bit more of a bulky three-quarter ounce bucktail than you would normally get in the store. And this is pretty important because that bulk, it cuts down the casting distance, but it enables the bucktail to ride a little bit higher in the water column on the slow to moderate retrieve that I want to use. Now even though this is a homemade bucktail, um, they, that doesn't mean that the store boughts wouldn't work here. They, they certainly would. My point is that uh, if I was digging into my surf bag to look for a bucktail to use in this situation, I would go for one uh, that has a little bit more hair on it because I'm trying to keep it up a little bit higher in these calm conditions. If I didn't have any bulky bucktails, I could go down on the weight a little bit. Or another thing I could do is go up on the pork rind strip. I'm using a strip of number 50 Uncle Josh pork rind, and uh, that's a strip that I use quite a bit. But if I went up to a number 70, which is just a little bit bigger, that would also enable the bucktail to ride a little bit higher. You know, these are all kind of the intricacies that go into bucktailing, a, a matter of choosing. Uh, the correct bucktail weight, how much hair is on that bucktail, uh, what kind of a trailer, whether it's a pork rind and the size of the pork rind, or whether you're using something like um, one of the soft plastic grub tails, those curly tails, all of these things affect the way the bucktail swim. Okay, you can see I'm kind of straightening that jig out after that fish. Uh, the pork rind gets tangled in there a little bit. I just want to get everything back in order before I make another cast. This is the same stretch of beach that I shot this tsunami sand eel video on, and a couple people had asked me how I would work a bucktail in this area, so I figured I'd, I'd put this video together. And uh, yeah, you can see I have actually quite similar conditions to that video if you happen to see it, except that day was overcast and this is a, a nice clear day, but it's pretty early in the morning, so uh, it's a pretty good time to be fishing. As with the tsunami sand eel video, uh, there was nobody fishing on this stretch of beach when I was going by, and again, I saw just a few cormorants, those duck-like birds, uh, working in close, picking up some bait. So I decided to uh, get out, make a couple of casts, and uh, sure enough, right away I started hooking up. So uh, definitely, those cormorants are, are worth watching. You know, a lot of times people focus on the gulls, but uh, those duck birds working and picking up bait are very good indicators of where the fish might be. And this is the same outfit I use in many of my surf videos, a 9 foot medium action rod. This is built on a Lamaglass GSP-121L blank, that's a 10 footer. One foot cut off the butt is a Vanstall 200 spooled with 30 pound test spider wire stealth. And I have about a 36 inch liter of 50 pound test fluorocarbon. I joined the fluorocarbon to the braid with a barrel swivel and I have a tactical angler's clip at the end where I attach the lure. So you might notice the sun hasn't moved very much from uh, that first cast and in fact uh, I was getting hit about every other cast here despite the fact that it was 
um, really a bluebird day, very calm conditions and nobody paying attention to the stretch of beach. Uh, fishing was pretty good. Unfortunately, after this next fish here, um, I had to go to work so I couldn't stay on it, but I think if I'd had more time, I could have racked up a pretty good score. I crushed the barbs of my bucktail, so a situation like this where the fish gets it in its mouth a little bit uh, deeper, just back it right off, it comes right out easily. And you'll never lose a fish due to a crushed barb as long as you keep a bend in the rod. It's just uh, a really good thing to do. Okay, I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.